That is a 2018 Subaru Outback, and it is not your dad's station wagon. Well, except that it, it, it totally is. I mean, yeah, the Outback doesn't seem to be, at least on the face of it, very similar to your dad's 1973 Oldsmobile Vista Cruiser. Let's see how the Outback has changed from station wagons of yesteryear. Starting with the powertrain. You won't find a lumpy V8 under the hood of the Outback. Instead, this new one has four small cylinders, all bouncing around horizontally. A larger six-cylinder engine is available, but over the last four months of ownership, we have averaged an astonishing 29 miles per gallon with the little four. And don't expect three speeds of American slush in the transmission. This new Subaru has infinite ratios of Japanese rubber band CVT goodness. And then of course there is the ground clearance at almost nine inches. This Subaru Outback has ground clearance more in line with a 1974 Jeep CJ than a 1974 Chevrolet Caprice station wagon. And just like that Jeep CJ, it can send power to all four wheels, so it will never get stuck. Well, at least not in four inches of snow. Unlike your father's old wagon, there are some sporty touches as well. Check out that steering wheel. It's heavily bolstered, and what's that you see? Ah yes, those are legitimate paddle shifters on a Subaru Outback four-cylinder with a CVT. You'll also find a pretty advanced 8-inch touchscreen display with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And check out that background. That's Pleiades, the same constellation you'll find in the Subaru logo. And yes, unfortunately, the Outback doesn't have the wood paneling like a Ford Country Squire. But in reality, the Outback is very similar to the old school American station wagons, starting with the incredible amount of space. Now, arguably the main reason that vehicles like this Chevy Capri station wagon were so gosh darn popular here in the US was because of their size. They could carry anyone and haul anything and the Outback is no exception. This new Outback makes even relatively large crossovers look small in terms of interior volume. Let me give you a tiny example of what I'm talking about. This right here is one of my mom's absurdly large suitcases. I don't know why we have this thing, we never use it, and it's huge, but even still, without folding the seats down, I could fit like three of those in here. Behind the rear seats, the Outback can hold 35.5 cubic feet of stuff. With a fairly low lift height and a wide hatch opening, even bulky items are a breeze to load. There's even a handy plastic bumper cover to protect from dogs and other potentially clawed creatures. Fold the rear seats down using this handle in the trunk and the Outback can hold over 73 cubic feet of cargo. There is a handy second latch located on the seat back itself, giving you options when folding down the seats. There is so much room in here, I could literally just camp in this vehicle without a tent and even with another person here, it would be just fine. That is awesome. Even getting out, look at that. I'm six feet tall, no problems. The whole driving experience is, well, very old school in the best of ways. To unlock the car, there is a key with buttons and a hole in the door where the key can go. Then you use that same key in a different hole on the inside to start the car. Then, believe it or not, there is a lever. A lever to select a direction of movement. Once you are done moving in that direction, you use that same lever to engage park, at which time the key must be used again to turn the car off and lock the doors. What a novel concept, and yet so easy to use. And that is one of the best attributes of the Outback. The whole vehicle is super simple and straightforward. For example, there is a knob to turn up the radio. Not a haptic slider, not a gesture, not a voice command and a prayer, a knob. It worked for our dads, it'll work for us. And look, another knob for tuning the radio. The back seat is basic as well, but basic, and most importantly, big. At six feet tall, I have no problem with headroom, and while I am far too lanky to test seat width, I have no issue in any of the three. In terms of legroom, few vehicles apart from full-size pickup trucks will challenge its space credentials. In the back seat, you also find two cup holders and even a couple USB ports. 
The Subaru Outback, just like that old school Buick Estate, is pretty much the perfect road trip vehicle. Not only do we get over 500 miles per tank full in this Outback, there are just so many thoughtful features that make road tripping in this car and even driving around town an absolute pleasure. Take for example, the heated seats. Put them on their highest setting and in about five minutes, your butt will feel like you just ate a three cheese nacho grande burrito from Taco Bell. Oh, they get no. so incredibly painfully hot. It's awesome. There's three settings and say, you're in the middle of winter like we are in Colorado. If I put them on the second setting, for example, I can leave them on all the time. Second setting on, turn the car off, go do my shopping, come back on. The seats will remember what setting they were on before you left and they'll stay there. It's a nice feature. Another great feature is the available dual zone automatic climate control. To adjust the temperature, there are these grippy metal trim rings that feel extremely premium. And check this out. Each side has a tiny display within the dial that displays the temperature and seems to disappear altogether when turned off. The driving experience in the Outback is a complete throwback as well. Unlike so many modern hatchbacks and even crossovers, the Subaru makes no attempt to channel every pebble back to the driver. Rather, the Outback simply floats down the road. Imperfections and undulations are absorbed with ease as the car wafts along. Granted, this comes at the cost of precision handling, but I think it is truly a unique experience among new crossovers. Of course, there are other similarities relating back to the old family barges of yesteryear. A hard acceleration in the outback at a mile above sea level is met with the vigor of an asthmatic snail. But once up to speed, the engine and CVT combo simply hum along, making road trips quiet and efficient. Adding to the great road trip ability are the seats, which are the perfect combo of supportive and plush. Now there are some areas where the Subaru Outback is a little bit too closely related to those 1970s American station wagons. And I'm talking about the build quality. Now I'm not saying it's screwed together like a 1970s AMC Concorde wagon, that's just not true. Overall, it feels pretty well assembled, but there are a few problem areas we have noticed. Take for example the hood, which um, it doesn't really fit well at all. On the passenger side, there is this huge seam along the fender, and on the driver's side, it's almost non-existent. There's a similar issue with the little grate covering the speaker on the dashboard. It just sticks up in weird places, and if you're OCD, it'll drive you just a little bit nuts. The rear hatch also has some slight fitment problems as well. You really gotta commit to closing it. Just latching it softly is not possible. You really gotta slam it if you want it to close properly. And then there is the key fob. Now 96 out of 100 times, the key fob will work perfectly well. Four little buttons, they're easy to use. However, every now and then the key fob decides it doesn't wanna be a key fob and would much rather be a brick in that it doesn't do anything at all. So you lock the car with the key fob, everything will be fine. You come back from your grocery shopping, go to unlock it, and nothing, none of the buttons do anything. At that point, you then have to put the key in the door and unlock it, which of course sets the car alarm off, at which point the key fob determines, you know what, I'm done being a brick and I would like to be a key again, and then the key fob buttons will work for another 96 out of 100 times. A similar phenomenon happens with the infotainment. I think they're talking to each other because the infotainment likes to be a brick every now and then as well. It'll freeze, it won't respond to your commands, sometimes a swipe doesn't work, sometimes it'll just beep for no apparent reason, and that is a little bit annoying. Once again, most of the time it's fine, but every now and then it, it doesn't really want to be an infotainment screen. Other very thoughtful features include these integrated crossbars in the roof which clip in and out when you need them. And take a look at the placement of that oil filter. Does access get any more convenient? And thank you Subaru for giving us a dipstick. As many manufacturers are going away from them, it's great to have a simple and reliable way to check fluid levels. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to disparage the Outback in any way by comparing it to an old school American station wagon. In fact, I think that is a really good thing. In an age of relatively similar crossovers, the Outback really stands out. I love the huge amount of room on the interior. I love the squishy and comfortable highway ride. I like how it drives around town and I like all of the nifty features on the inside that make road tripping a breeze. And at $29,000 at MSRP, you get a huge amount of content as well. 
automatic climate control, you get automatic headlights, heated seats, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, the list goes on and on. And I love it for that reason. Now, if only the key would stop being a brick every now and then, maybe a software update on the screen and yeah, the six cylinder would be a little bit better merging onto the highway and this American wagon would be pretty much perfect. As always, I'm Tommy with the Fastlane Car. Be sure to go back to tflcar.com for more news, views, and real world Subaru Outback reviews. <laughs>